good morning. We're going to take a few moments just to breathe and um, hang out in a pose. So we'll start with the yin portion of our yin yang flow today, and then we'll wind up flowing. Um, and it's probably, uh, you, I hope anyway, at this point, you might have gathered a few yoga props in your life. So you could use two yoga blocks. One can go under your head and one can go under your shoulder blades. I like this quite a lot, especially if I want a really firm lift and um, stretch in the chest and shoulder stabilizer muscles. You could also be a little more gentle today and instead use a blanket. So I've got this one folded in half and half again, and then I'm going to fold it one more time so that the length of the blanket will cover most of my spine. Like that. And then I'm just going to roll that or fold it up so that it makes one little bolster. Alright, so this is a little bit more on the gentle end of the spectrum in terms of the way the shoulders will ex um, experience things. I'm going to go for that today, just kind of make sure it's relatively lump free. But again, you could use the blocks if you have that instead. Okay, the blocks might also come in handy under your knees, so if you want to grab them for that purpose, you can do that. So I'm going to start by reclining back over the blanket. Oh, good, the sun's right here. <laughs> that feels nice. So, and then just wiggle until it feels like it's in a good spot. So if I'm using the blocks, it needs to be pretty high up my back so that the shoulder blades are bearing the weight of the body on the block. If it's down too low, your spine It'll feel really pokey and hard against your spine. So get the block high if you're using a block up your back. But if you're using a blanket, it can come down quite low. In fact, you could even go all the way to your sacrum if that feels okay. Now, I'm gonna do a tiny bit of a lift here under my head. Just one of the things I like about the blanket um, is I can do just a little tiny lift. The block's a little bit more firm. And then we're gonna put the feet together and kind of drop the knees open like little butterfly wings. Now, again, you can add some support here. The nature of yin practice is to get into a shape that feels um, a little bit interesting, a little bit uncomfortable. Not so much so that you start to tighten up or tense up. So if you feel kind of protective, like, oh, you know, tensing of the body, then you can use yoga props to help you support that pose right at the point where it feels interesting or a little bit um, a little bit uncomfortable. But we're not trying to go for um, really big sensation. The tissue that we're working with here um, is the fascia that lives under the skin, first of all. And that is really, it does not take almost any pressure to get to that layer. <laughs> it's just a little tiny touch is all that's necessary. And then we're working in these layers of connective tissue that hold joints together. Um, and so those are not places that have a whole lot of sensitivity. There's not a lot of nerve endings in that spot. You know, we have more sensory nerves on the outside of our body than we have deeper into the joints. So again, we're not going for super big sensation. We just want like, ooh, that's interesting. Like I've got a little stretch in my inner thighs right now that feels interesting. But if it felt like my whole back or my hips or my, um, abdominals were tensing up to hold me, then I would want to put support under my legs, okay? So when I kind of ride, like right at the beginning point of sensation, that's the wave that we're surfing in yin. I hope that makes sense. And then this allows me an opportunity to really breathe deeply and if I notice that the breath starts to get choppy or I stop paying attention to it then that might indicate again that I'm over the edge with the sensation of the pose so being able to maintain a deep rhythmic breath while simultaneously being a little uncomfortable is the work that we're doing in yin Try as best you can to breathe way down into your diaphragm. Make the diaphragm do some work. And if you can, let the exhales elongate a little bit. Let those come out super soft and take their time. Don't be 
too forceful with that, but just sort of let them meander out of you. How's that? for about another minute. There's a point for me, about three minutes or so in, sometimes a little longer, where I feel my body shift gears and it slows everything down and everything gets, everything, <coughs> apparently my voice is here today, but everything gets just a little bit softer. So that's the point I'm kind of marinating in right now. more big breaths. And then we're going to bring the legs together to start with. And then you might just pause like that for a moment. And sometimes it even feels nice to squeeze the thighs together a little bit. And then relax them. And I like to do these kind of, not too wide, but slightly wide little windshield wipers. I'll build up to a wider position there. Big y'all. <laughs> it's a big sunbeam. Right in my eyeballs. Alright, so I'm gonna roll over to the side and take this blanket out now. And if you've got blocks, you take those two things out from under you. Ugh. And then <laughs> then you can feel the results of having had that object under your back, which for me is always delightful. So with the blocks, there's this really intense sensation of my back kind of spreading out like melting butter, right? Just, just like a puddle. And then with the blanket, it's not that big a sensation. There's kind of like this feeling of, oh, there's, that's where that blanket was. And there's kind of an impression. But there's an interesting sort of subtle sensation of the arm bone dropping back into the shoulder socket, which I really like. And so just check in with what's true for you. And what's the important part of this whole thing, y'all, is that we're noticing what is happening inside of our bodies, all right? The more we practice that skill of fine-tuning our inner awareness, this is called interoception, right? The more we fine-tune that, the more we actually connect to the part of our nervous system that is responsible for our ability to relax and be comfortable around each other and create kind of social um, connections, right? We connect better to ourselves and to others when we can get in touch with that part of our nervous system. And that part of our nervous system is also responsible for this action of sensing the body and sending that information back to the brain. It's the same nerve pathways. And so it's important work that we pause and notice now that I've explained that to you, <laughs> we're going to do um, a banana pose. So <coughs> the banana pose is very simple. And there are some ways you can play with it, but this is all it is. So you just stretch out and then you bend to the side. And you can even swing your legs over to the same side so that if you looked at yourself from above, you would resemble a banana. Now, there are some things to make your shoulders happy. So you could, 
if your arms are happy up all the way overhead, you can take the, so this is my right side that's stretching longer, okay? My left side's a little curled in. So I can put my right wrist into my left hand, bend at my left elbow, and that gives me a tiny bit more of a sensation across my, out, my arm, like my tricep area in my arm, okay? That's interesting to me, I like that. And on the IT band end of the thing, where the top of my hip down to my knee, um, that area I could stretch out a little bit more by placing the right leg over the left leg, kind of at the ankle, and then allowing my right hip to get heavier toward the floor. So that slight elevation and then dropping down seems to target, at least for me, this kind of IT band area. Now, <clears throat> stretching out your triceps, not such a big deal. This tissue is pretty thin, pretty easy to do. The IT band is incredibly strong, very dense, fibrous tissue. You are not going to stretch that thing, but what you will do is release all the tissue around it, okay? So don't be too aggressive here. Let it be soft. We're gonna let time and uh, our, the inclination to stay put um, take over here, all right? So we're gonna stay for about two more minutes, just kind of hanging out with, with the sunbeam in our eyeballs, or maybe just that's just me. Taking some deep breaths. And again, if you can do it, and you can let the arms relax a little bit more, you can even bend at both elbows, and you can put um, something under your knees if that would be more helpful, right? You can get softer here. In any case, <clears throat> again, if we can let the exhales kind of linger on their way out, that's helpful to this kind of um, relaxation response. your exhale you're going to unleash all of this so we're going to unwind anything we're holding on to we're going to come back to the center and then once we get to the middle <laughs> we're going to pause for a second and feel and again this is what i think is really interesting so if i were to like kind of actually measure things there would not be a difference here probably or not much but it feels like my right leg is now a couple inches longer than my left leg my right arm is a couple of inches longer than my left arm. I feel a kind of pleasant sort of warmth of sensation in my shoulder joint. I feel a kind of pleasant warmth of sensation around my outer hip. And not, not a burning sensation, but just a kind of gentle like attention to that area. Just a little bit of interesting kind of heightened sensitivity. How's that? Um, <clears throat> so those are the things, right? Notice all the things. <laughs> Try to see what is happening for you in your body. That is a uh, try to protect. My, I just need some sunglasses. This is the truth. But in any case, like just notice, notice the way this worked. Now I like to do a little bit of a rinse for my sacrum right before I do the other side, just because pulling on the tissue on one side sometimes makes that feel slightly about. So if I just do that, we're back to neutral and I could do the other side pretty easily. So I'm gonna give myself a tiny bit more room here. Oh, hello there. And then I'm gonna stretch out and bend the opposite direction. And again, I experiment on both sides. So 
does it feel okay for me to hold my wrist, right, and let that arm get heavy? Would it be better if I let the arms come out like a, t um, like a cactus or more of a T? You can just experiment with how the shoulders are being impacted. And again, you can if you want cross that ankle over. And sometimes for me, it's better if I bend the other leg and just kind of hook that on the outside of the shin or the outside of the ankle. Or sometimes it's nice to have both legs all the way straight. So you might just experiment with how you're going to land in the shape. to let yourself kind of spend the first little bit of a pose nestling in too. Now here's an interesting thing to notice um, with the breath should you wish to. Notice if your heart rate changes between the inhale and the exhale or with the inhale and the exhale. Take two more big breaths. a difference and then you also just you know if it's not a pleasant difference if when you come out of the pose you, it's unpleasant for you notice that too because that's important information as well um, if it is pleasant uh, then for me I say oh that's cool I can do that again right that's, that felt good if I get an unpleasant sensation or the response for me is unpleasant then I know that in the future I might want to do that differently. So it's an opportunity for us to learn from our practice. Okay, so we're gonna eventually work our way up off the floor here <laughs> and come to a seated position. So you can rock yourself up or roll to the side and come up. If you want to lay there for another couple breaths, you could do that, I'm not in charge of you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna set this guy off to the side. going to come to a seated position that feels relatively comfortable. So 
if you need to sit up on the edge of a blanket or a pillow, do that. I'll just kind of work the sit bones out from underneath me. So we're going to do a little bit of work with the shoulders. We're going to bring the shoulders up around and back a few times. And then go the other direction. Just see how big a circle you can draw with your shoulder blades. Or the heads of your arm bones, whatever you want to perceive as the center point of your shoulder. And when you get to the bottom, we're just going to kind of hunch the ears up, or shoulders as close to the ears as we can, and then drop them. And lift them up as close as you can, and then drop them. And lift them up as close as you can, oh, and then drop them. And then we're going to let the shoulders relax as best we can. You can position your arms in such a way that they are able to kind of feel a little bit supported. <laughs> and then you're going to drop your chin and we're going to roll the head up and over one side. Now, for me, um, I do the first one nice and slow and check out both sides and just see if there's anything that feels pinchy or, or uh, prickly. And as long as it feels pretty good, even if it's a big stretch, I just go back and forth. So we're gonna just go back and forth, unless you've got a spot that says no, in which case you can work around that spot or just hold steady with a stretch. to the side that I started on and once I'm here I'm going to just double check that my spine is mostly stable so that all of the stretch here is happening in the neck and then I'm going to take this so this is the right side of my neck and I've kind of found a stretch that I think is interesting kind of creeping up the back of my skull right here so I'm going to stay with that stretch and then I'm going to extend my arm out to um, see if I like the way that feels Okay, so you could leave the hand in the lap, or you could extend out. And you, like, for sometimes for me, it feels nice to pivot around a little spot. So you could change up the way you're stretching. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> Those big deep breaths help. So I'm going to bring my hand back, I'm going to bring my chin back to the center. Before I do the other side, I'm going to float my head back up to neutral. And then again, just perceive the relationship I've got here in my neck. And just noticing like the place that for me that was really tight were these little occipital muscles that live right here. Um, at the top of my skull, which gives me some information, right? So the information that it gives me is that my first two vertebrae are slightly out of alignment, probably because of the way I slept <laughs> or because of stress, because those two vertebrae are really related to the stress response of the body. And so just noticing that, right? If the stretch sensation were deeper in my muscle, it might be a different indicator. But that for me is an immediate, like, mm, pay attention, right? Because that is related to my stress response, so I want to know that. So anyway, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> I'm going to drop my chin. I'm going to search for a stretch on this left side of my neck and see where I find it. And then I'm going to extend my arm out to kind of go with it. 
And again, I might pivot slightly over it or change the shoulder really gently. Just get it to work with your neck the way it feels. Like you should. And if you do something wrong, you'll learn. And <laughs> we all learn. Don't be too aggressive. You just go with it slow. Okay, so we're coming back to the center for me, and then I'm going to float my head up. So I'm going to just give you a little insight into my own little circumstance. This is just me, um, but the reason I'm telling you about it is so you'll have some information as well. So I noticed on this side that these two occipital muscles were the ones that were really being pulled on. On this side, it's this big sternophytomastoid muscle. And this big muscle, um, what it's doing, I think, is trying to compensate, right? So this giant muscle here is trying to help hold my head in place um, over this kind of strain. Or in some way there's a relationship here in terms of steadying my neck and my head. So this is the sort of thing that I think is really valuable about yoga practice is tuning into these kind of finer sensations and trying to, you know, we learn about ourselves. We learn a little bit about how our bodies respond in different circumstances. So I find that really interesting. Throw that out to you and then you decide <laughs> how you wanna go about it. But if there's little things that you get curious about, research them, find out more about that. All right, we're gonna come up to all fours and then we'll work a little longer down into the spine. Oh. So we'll try to get into this upper and mid back with not just this round sensation pose, like that part of my back loves that. So instead, I'm gonna also try to get my shoulder blades to float up off my back and kind of flatten out that upper curve a little bit. It's not really gonna change the curve of my spine, but it changes the muscles around it so it feels that way. All right, so I'm gonna curl my tailbone in, get to that lower back with this shape, and then see if I can get my shoulders off a little bit more there when I come to this shape. Okay, so do that a couple more times and you can play with a little side to sides or a little tail wag. And just noticing what's in happening and in, inside or on the, you know, just under the skin or with the muscle, wherever it is. You might get clued into things going on deeper, too. All right. So I'm going to do a little downward facing dog. If child's pose is better for you, you can also go to child's pose or just stay with this all fours position. So I'm going to tuck my toes under and take myself up. And I'm going to continue this kind of shoulder play while I'm here, kind of moving the shoulder blades up and down on my back connecting in a little bit, and then I'm going to do a little bit more too with my legs. Alrighty. Now when you've had enough of downward dog, you just come to a forward bend. If you want to stay a little longer, stay a little longer. I'm shaking up my wrists right now. Just bringing a little bit of awareness to my hands, stretching out the fingers, curling them in. Having the weight of downward dog on my hands definitely tuned me into my wrists. Right, so now I'm going to kind of shift back and forth with my legs. I might even grab my elbows and just let that upper body go for a ride. It's not quite a squat. But I'm getting into that squat territory. How's that? I'm going to bring the legs closer together. You can stay with that for a little longer if you want. Half 
way. So it feels like your back sort of flattens out. And then exhale, bend your knees, fold over. And if you can go straighter, it doesn't feel like it's going to tear anything. Try a little straighter in the legs. Come up halfway. And then fold it over. And we're going to come all the way to standing. <laughs> oh, when you get there, give yourself a bit of a stretch. So I'm just going to find your, find your way into a mountain pose. <laughs> Correct any wardrobe malfunctions that come up, and then find your way in a mountain. And so I'm spreading out my toes. Try to feel, feel the sensations on the bottom of your feet. Whether that's the kind of silky sensation that your mat has, or the sensation of the weight of your feet touching certain points. Try not to lock out the knees or the hips. Be a little bit more kind around your shoulders and in your eyes. Nice big breath. We're going to reach the arms up. Give it a big stretch. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold. Step back with your left foot. And we're going to bring that left knee to the ground. And then we're going to surf forward into the lunge. Now, I'm going to use some blocks because I find them helpful here. But you could do this without blocks. So we're going to surf forward until we feel like that left hip is as far forward as it ought to go. And then we're just going to back off of that about halfway. Okay. Surf forward. Feel where the edge starts. Back off about halfway. Surf forward. We're going to take it up a little if we can. And then notice if the edge shifted. And then we're going to take the hips back so that the front leg becomes kind of the focus of the stretch. Take both hands over here to the left. This is where the blocks come in handy because I can put my elbows on them and see if we can get a little more into this kind of inner thigh area. You can bend your knee if you need, <laughs> or if you just want. <laughs> that works too. All right, so then we're going to come back around, bending at the knee a bit. We'll bring this leg back. This will put us into a modified plank. And then from there, if you'd rather do a full plank, you can certainly do that. So with the modified plank, trying to really feel yourself lift through the belly. Press up into the shoulders a little bit so you're nice and firm. Or holding that regular full plank for three, two, one. Now lowering down with control, coming into the back bend that's the right one for you. And then coming back. We're going to go into downward dog, and again, you can do child pose or all fours instead. Oh. All right. So then this right leg is going to come up, and pausing there, sink into your left heel. We're going to bring the right leg forward, and then step it forward. And then take it a moment to just look up. My mat is very slippery today, I don't know why. But <laughs> we're going to step up to the top of the mat with the left foot. Come up halfway. Exhale, fold. And then we're going to come all the way to standing. <laughs> oh, and then come back to mountain pose. Just notice how that landed you. Is there a difference now in the mountain pose versus the one we did at the beginning? Take it a nice big breath again. Kind of working around whatever you got in your house. Exhale, fold forward. <laughs> Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold. We're going to step back with the right leg, coming into the lunge, and then bringing that knee down. And again, we're going to work with this hip. So you can keep your hands on the floor, or you can use blocks. We're going to surf the hips forward until you feel something interesting and then back off of it. 
surf it forward and back off of it. Just kind of halfway. Surf it forward and then we're going to stay put and add on to that this lifted belly, lifted body. interesting to try to kind of find that calm inside that storm. All right, so then we're going to back the hips off and fold over this front leg. And then we're going to do this little diagonal thing. And again, if the blocks are helpful for you, use them. If you don't have them, don't worry about it. Just stay on your hands if you don't want to go too low. And we're just feeling out a little stretch in this inner thigh. It might be more your hamstrings than the back side, but inner part, which is the, what it feels like to me. Again, you can step this into a modified plank and hold that, or you can go right into a full plank. And we're just going to pause there, draw the navel in, keep the shoulders strong, feel yourself press the fingertips into the floor a little bit, and if your knees are extended, press back through the feet and lift through your legs. Good. Three, two, one. Lowering with control, coming into the back bend of your choice. Take it back to down dog. Hopefully I won't slip too much. <laughs> so we're going to take that left leg up, sink into that right heel a bit, and then we're going to bring that left leg forward and pause for a moment. That little lunge shape, and then we'll step the right foot up and come up halfway, and then fold come all the way to standing. Ooh, give yourself a nice big stretch. And then again, find your mountain pose. I have an inkling that this might just be for me, but the mountain pose is really important right now. It's a pose where we're standing, so it requires that we bring a little bit to it. But it also requires that we find a softness and uh, a vulnerability. I think this pose is quite vulnerable, actually, because everything in me wants to protect myself. And so standing with my chest open without moving, without trying to protect or deflect, is interesting. And maybe this is an important place to be. physically and metaphorically <laughs> speaking. So we're going to shift the weight into our right leg. Right on. And we're going to take this vulnerable mountain pose and make it wobbly <laughs> by taking ourselves into an eagle. So I'm going to bend at the hip a little bit. It's almost like I'm coming into kind of a baby chair pose. And then I'm going to swing this left leg over the top. Now you can hook the foot behind if that's available to you. It's not for me. I'm going to put my left arm on the bottom. Okay, leg on top, arm on the bottom. That just helps me remember it. Doesn't matter if you do it the other way. And then pause for a moment and try to catch that balance and hold on. Or allow the balance to happen. How's that? And take one more breath. And then we're going to pick up this left leg and step back into warrior two. And again, my mat's feeling a little slippery today, so I might change things up. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to find a footing that feels safe, at least for the time being. We're going to take the arms up, come on back to reverse warrior, and over to a side angle. And give yourself a moment to really stretch into that. If you want to go lower, you can go lower. 
for me right now, that's where I've placed my feet because it felt relatively safe to be right here. So I'm gonna match my spine to my legs, right? Then we're gonna take this into a triangle. So we're gonna straighten out the front leg and do this reverse triangle shape. And it's almost like from the top of my fingers to the tops of my toes, I'm stretching that one long line. And then come into your triangle pose consciously, <clears throat> bit by bit. And then breathe. Now you can look down at your big toe or you can look up, right? You can look out to the side, but generally if you look up or you look down, it aligns the neck a little bit better. So just experiment with that, see if that's true for you. Depending on the day, I like one versus the other. And can we get into a shape like this and linger on those exhales? Nice big breath. All right, we're gonna come all the way around with the legs. So I'm bending my knee, I'm gonna swing this all the way around and then match my feet. And I'm gonna sit back a little bit here just to get a kind of, <clears throat> a little bit more intimate with what my hips are experiencing before I stretch the legs all the way up and come into this wide angle forward bend. Now I'm a fan of this pose, but this may not be your jam. And so you can keep that bend in your knees as much as you need. There's a lot of sensation for me in this pose. And so just giving myself permission to back off and go back into it are also, also nice. And then I like this kind of an opportunity to really drop the back of my head and let gravity kind of do a little bit of magic there. But if that's not right for you, then keep your head a little more level. All right, yogis, we're going to come out of here. If you want a vinyasa, you can walk your hands all the way back around to the front. Step back into a plank. Lower down, do your up dog or cobra. Come on back to down dog and then come up to the top of the mat. If you're cool with it, you're going to also just step forward if you don't want to do the vinyasa. And then we'll just pause here and wait our friends out with some of these little halfway into forward bends. Okay, so we'll do one more of those. And hopefully the folks that chose the vinyasa will match up with us here. <laughs> and then we'll all come all the way up to standing eventually. Give ourselves a nice big stretch. And then find ourselves back in that mountain pose. And again, I've done some stuff on one side I haven't done on the other yet. Does that leave a signature? <laughs> Can I feel that in my body? And again, sometimes the sensations that I have don't make a lot of sense scientifically. Like I feel like there's like a big fluffy um, bubble, <laughs> a chi bubble on my right side, the left side doesn't have yet. <laughs> right? That's probably imagination in part, but I'm definitely experiencing something with my nervous system. Something's happening. So I'm gonna sink into my hip, so I've got this little baby chair, I'm putting all that weight into the left leg, wrapping my right leg around, Woo, trying to catch the balance, right arm on the bottom. Oh, maybe I can grab today, that's fine. And then hold steady. Take a big breath. And we're gonna let this thing go. We're gonna step it back to Warrior Two, sort of <laughs> like somewhere, somewhere in a Warrior Two realm. Ugh. It doesn't feel too slippery. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, yogis. So when you get yourself settled, come through the vinyasa a little bit here, kind of back and forth of these two poses.
come back and straighten out this front leg. Take that reverse triangle and then take yourself into your triangle. Again, be really conscious about how you're doing it. Balloon into it. <laughs> Sometimes one side gives more resistance than another. You can work with that. Last big breath. And then again, we're going to kind of slither around and find our way in. Now, I'm going to turn around all the way <coughs> to the side so you can see what I'm up to here. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to take two blocks and put them <coughs> excuse me, in front of me. And then I'm going to take my legs back into that wide position. Feel out, and basically what I'm going to do is kind of like a wide angle downward dog, except most of the weight's going to be in the legs. Okay, so with my hands on the blocks, I get a little bit more of kind of a feeling of being able to extend a bit more in my arms, so I can stretch out a bit more through my chest and let my neck relax into that extension. Now. I don't like to do this with a lot of weight on the arms because that hyperextension in my shoulder with a lot of weight there can be problematic. But like this, where the weight's in my legs, it's pretty great. <laughs> Taking one more big breath. All right, so we're going to come around. Now, if you want one more vinyasa, you're going to throw that in there. And then instead of jumping up or walking up to the top of your mat, you're going to from your downward dog come to a seated position. So we can come to child's pose to start with. Right, so throw your vinyasa in there if you want one. I'm not gonna deny you. <laughs> and then we'll all arrive in a seated position once again. Now, I'm gonna do right leg first. Just a couple things to notice. When the heart rate increases and decreases, right, as you're breathing, is most important. So when you take a big inhale, notice does your heart rate go up? And then when you linger on your exhale, does the heart rate go down? So that is called heart rate variability. <laughs> and it's an indicator of whether or not we have a strong and resilient parasympathetic nervous response. It's just an indicator, there's other ones. But it's one of the ones that's really important to kind of knowing like, are we in a position where our body is resilient in times of stress? So it's one of those things for me, that when I start to feel those two numbers getting closer to even, I kn again, it's like, oh, you know, I can fool myself that I'm under stress in my brain, <laughs> but I can't fool my body. And so that's one of those little indicators that I pay attention to. So I pay attention to this like stress around my neck in very specific points. I pay attention to how my breath variability is. Those are really important indicators for me and ways that I can, I can use the breath, consciously relax to help build resilience into my own stress system, okay? so. We're gonna get into this forward bend, and again, we're gonna to try to pay attention to lingering a bit on the exhale and noticing if there is, in fact, a shift between a heart, the inhale heart rate and the exhale heart rate, okay? So I've got my legs positioned in this Janya Shirsasana shape. One leg is forward, one leg is bent. Um, your foot can come as high up your leg or as low down as you like. This is a comfortable place for my knees. And then I'm gonna use my foot for resistance. You could grab your big toe, you could grab the side of your foot. If you can't reach that, grab a towel or a scarf or a yoga strap, whatever you got. Wrap that around your foot. 
and then hold it. And we're gonna hold with the same hand, so right hand, right foot, okay? So I'm gonna bend the knee a little bit. I'm gonna press backwards and down with my sit bone. So I'm lengthening a bit through the hamstrings. I'm engaging a bit through my quadriceps. And it's almost like you're pushing on the gas and pulling. So if you can hold your foot, cool. If you're holding the strap, cool. So you're pushing on the gas and pulling a little bit so that you can bring your breastbone forward. Now, we've put a lot of stress on the body. Let's see what happens with the breath. So inhale and then exhale a little bit longer if you can. And don't go to a place where it feels like you're choking yourself. This should be relatively natural. So if it's too, if it feels choky, lighten up a little bit. Notice if your heart rate changes. We're getting enough activity in the body that we should be getting a little bit of, um, you know, there's like a response that the body has to us working this hard. hamstrings a lot today y'all <laughs> if you were here for a hamstring stretch I got you babe <laughs> the rest of us I don't know <laughs> so here we go we're gonna do this other side and again we're gonna get really active with this so use a strap as needed so we're gonna bend the knee a little bit we're gonna press backwards and down with the sit bones engage the quads a bit my foot is super active and engaged. I'm gonna hold on to it. It's almost, again, I'm gonna create that push on the gas resistance so that I can lengthen my spine. And then breathe. See if you can linger those exhales and see if it shifts your heart rate a little bit. If it's too much information and you can't feel your heart rate, that's okay too. You'll just notice it later when you're just doing breathing work. Take one more big breath. We're gonna let go and come all the way up. Oh. All right, yogis. Nice job. Now, when I do things that are asymmetrical, I like to do one symmetrical pose as well. So the symmetrical pose that I'm gonna do is both legs out this way. You could do both legs in or come back to the butterfly that we did at the beginning. So that's up to you. I'm going to go for this wider position. And I'm going to do this a little bit more in a yin way. And by that, I just mean I'm going to let my legs stay soft rather than really engaged. Um, but I'm not going to be pushy. Um, so I'll keep my spine a little longer, fold forward. Just feel where that lands my body. You can get a little more active and do that in a more yang fashion, or you can be super relaxed, a little bit more of a yin fashion. Yin with a small letter Y. <laughs> Take two more breaths. Shavasana. We're going to do a little happy baby first, but we'll get close. So if you want like some pillows or blankets or things like that to make your Shavasana a little bit more comfy, grab those things. 
So again, like one of the places I notice when I'm stressed is this occipital, these two little uh, muscles that kind of work right under the occiput, this little ridge of bone that's on the back of your skull. You've got your first and second vertebrae and that whole area is also the area where the brain stem and the cranial nerves come out of the brain stem. And so it's a sensitive place um, in relationship to stressful times. So I like to have something that gently, gently cups that area. I don't want, again, this is super sensitive area and the sensitivity is right under the layer of the skin. We're looking up to to basically just let the fascia relax. So this is not a big movement. If you've ever had cranial sacral therapy where you hardly knew anything was going on, that's what we're aiming at. It's really, really subtle. But just a little subtle blanket right under that area of the skull or even just folded edge of the yoga mat, just so there's like a tiny little cupping of support is really cool. And um, for me, very relaxing. So I'm gonna get that for myself and then I'm gonna put a pillow under my legs. And if you don't have a big long pillow, you can use two throw pillows or a blanket. Okay, so before I get crazy here, I'm gonna just get myself into place. And again, with this neck thing, I don't want there to be like a situation where my head's being held in any particular way. I'm gonna find the best place for my head, but I'm just gonna cup the sensation of the blanket right gently against the back of my skull. Okay, so that's what we're going for on that level. So let's get a little happy baby into our life if we're up for it. This is sort of like squatting upside down. <laughs> that's basically what this pose is all about. And then we're going to release the legs. And you can adjust any support you like to have under your legs. Sometimes it feels good to me to stretch the leg out, give it a little shimmy, and then do the same thing on the other side. And then I'll come back to that just really soft little cup of blanket. jaw relax and let your breath get a little deeper if it's available.
yogis, just notice that your body is breathing. Don't worry about any technique, just notice the breath as it is. Take a breath so deep you can feel it to your toes. Let it go with a sigh. And then we're going to do a little fingers and toes. Stretch them out. Work a little wrist and ankle magic. <laughs> Your whole body. Maybe one more little hug and a back massage before you go. And then we'll roll ourselves or rock ourselves to a seated position one way or another. So thank you for practicing yoga with me today and being present in your body at your house <laughs> collectively. Let's take a big breath together while we're here. Nice big inhale. Let that sigh come from the depths of your soul. <sighs> Namaste, yogis. <laughs>